Welcome to part three of the series. This is the third and final part of the series. The first two, part one, we looked at creating the purchase orders and the order line items tables along with the customers and went into a little bit of detail on how to connect and integrate each of those tables. Part two, we built the packing slip items and the packing slip tables. We did build an automation and we also integrated with fill out so that the shipping and receiving can sign directly from a tablet or from a computer to approve the shipping process or however it works for you and your organization. Welcome to our channel. My name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business processes and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, please visit our website below to book a free console. Part three, we are going to develop an interface that sits and lives basically on top of all of this data so that it makes it really simple and much easier to use. I'll go up here to interfaces and we're going to select start building. We can leave this as interface or name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And the first thing that we're going to do is select the record review. There is a number of different options here for you. And you can also start from a blank canvas, but I'm going to go into record review and I want the purchase order to be the first thing that populates and select next. And I'm just going to turn everything on for the time being as it's really easy to remove information that we do not need. Select next, label this orders, and I will click finish. And it will bring in all of the information and all of those fields I just selected based off of the purchase order table. So on the left side here, you would have a list of all of your purchase orders if you had multiple, and you can also search for them by the information that exists here. So you could search by customer or you could search by purchase order number, however you entered it into the system. These are all the details within that purchase order. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this trigger because we're actually going to develop a button to run that automation for us. I'll remove that. We'll want something like the order number. We are going to make it editable. We'll select the order date. We'll make that editable as well. The customer, we will select that and allow users to link and unlink customers. And we'll just change this style to a pill because that's all we really need to see and we'll change the status the order status to being editable as well the total amount often what i like to do is put that in the top bar so that when you scroll it doesn't go away i feel like that could be important data to be able to see and we can just navigate over to this appearance tab here and turn on the show label toggle so that it shows here to see what data you're actually viewing. You can move this information around and kind of structure it in a somewhat custom way. You are limited to exactly how you want it to display, but you do have some flexibility as well. I might move a few things to be side by side to not take up so much real estate vertically and be able to use some of the screen that we have available to us. I'll change this notes and maybe expand that a little bit. We won't need the record ID here when i click delete it doesn't actually delete the field from the database but it's just deleting it from our actual view and display within the interface so remove that i'm going to leave the remaining to ship that could be some important information and we do want the line items but we do not want it displayed in this way so we're going to remove that as well i'll go right back into this add element from this purchase orders record list. And I will scroll down to the order align items field. And then we have a number of ways to display the order line items. It was currently or previously on field. We actually want to go down here and select the list view and we'll add that. We can close the add element and we can just expand this all the way across. We can probably shorten this up a little bit too. Now, it's displaying the two line items that are associated with the purchase order. When you select purchase order, you can see some of the purchase order information and then the items associated. We'll select the list. We'll go over here to 
the fields and we're only going to display the fields that are actually relevant to us. I'm going to get rid of these first three and I'm going to leave item name. The number ready could be important. The quantity ordered is definitely important. We'll maybe want the status and the unit price. Now you can adjust the order of these by clicking and dragging on your right side here. So I want the quantity ordered. That's fine. I'll bring in the unit price. I'll leave the status there. And then the number ready could be the last one. Or actually I might switch that up. I'll put the number ready right after the unit price. I can shorten that up a little bit and collapse all of these. You can see the permissions is currently editable. That is actually exactly how I want it set up. But if you were displaying this information in a way that you did not want it to be editable, only viewable, you could click this view only, and then I cannot click into it and make any changes. So I'll go back to editable. I do want to allow users to add additional line items. I'm going to select the purchase orders on the left side here, and then I'm going to scroll down to the allow users to create new orders. And this is the form that will populate because I do want users obviously to create new purchase orders when they come in. I can remove the trigger from the display. I want to leave the order number. I want to leave the order date. I want to be able to select customers. Status is pending. I can probably remove that. Leave notes and the line items. I actually do want to remove from this view and I'll show you why in a moment, but essentially you're going to add the purchase order and then you'll be able to add the line items directly within. That's good enough for now. I'll just click this preview mode. We'll go up here and I'll add a new order. Just select today's date. The only customer we have, that's fine. And I'm not going to add a note for the time being. We'll create that. And you can see it populates here on the left side. And then I can just go down and add our items here. So we can add our item name or number, however you have it set up within your company. There's been five that was ordered and they are $120 a unit. And you can see the calculation happen top here. It's just going to multiply five by 120 and we only have one item. So it's just summing the total there. Okay. So we're going to turn the preview back off. So that's just a way that we can test the actual system that we're developing live. And I am going to go in here and add an element. I'll select all elements and I'm going to bring in a button. So what we're going to do here is actually initiate that automation that we created in part two of the series. So instead of selecting a drop down, which was previously a single select, like we had created here, we're going to change that automation to trigger based off of a button press here. So we've got the button created. I'll go back into automations and I'm just going to change the trigger type to a, when a button is clicked. So we'll click, change that trigger. We'll just turn it off for a moment. And we have the trigger as when a button is clicked. We'll go back to interfaces, select the button, and we are going to select run automation. And the automation is create package slip because we've already got created. And then now we can go back into the automations, turn it on back to interfaces, select the button, and we can see that it is now live. We can change the appearance a little bit. I'm going to make it green and I'm going to add some text as create hacking slip. So just a reminder, based off of the number that we add here, again, I'll go back to this one. We have a number of line items, whatever number you enter here. And when you create the packing slip by pressing this button, the packing slip will get created with each of these associated line items, assuming you've entered a number here with the quantity shipped being this number ready. We've got our purchase order basically set up and ready to go. One thing that we can do now is add an additional page and the page is going to be very similar, only it's going to be looking at our actual packing slips. So we can click record review. 
click next. The table that we want to display is packing slip, not packing slip items. Select next, and we will turn on all of the fields. And then I can decide what I'm going to hide and remove once we're into it. I'm going to just label, label this packing slips, and you can see that it shows up here. I'm going to remove the signature that's displayed like this for the time being. It seems to take up a lot of space. And I am going to remove this ID, the receiver name that can be brought down to the bottom. This link, we can actually remove the sign button. We can actually remove, and I will show you how to create a different one in a moment here. We're going to remove each item and we're going to go down here to add an element. Scroll down to packing slip items and we want to display it in a list view. Expand this across, similar, shorten this up, and we're going to change the fields that are actually showing and displayed here. So probably what we want is quantity shipped, item name, and that might be all we need for the actual packs. We can shorten this up to display the number that we're actually shipping. We can also remove this packing slip number because it shows up here in the ID and we will leave the receiver name. It's showing the receiver name already because I tested it in a previous video. We can leave that as is. I'll click add element. We do not want this to be editable because this gets completed in the fellow integration and we can bring in the receiver signature and we can display it just in a field then we can change the status we'll allow that to be editable so we can mark it when it's complete and notes will allow that to be editable as well you can move these around by clicking this move button and change it look however you want but i won't get into the design of this too much for the purpose of this video we have everything that we need here other than we want to go in do the elements select a button. I'm going to add it in the top here. And I'm just going to change this to go to a URL in a record because we have linked that in part two of the series. And we can go to the signed packing slip link. That's the field that we're going to link that to. We'll change the appearance to sign packing slip. And we will test that in a moment. And the last thing that we're going to want to do, let's click over here and select from a list. We're going to bring in our list of customers. We're going to click finish on that. We'll select the add record button. We'll click inline editing. We'll turn that on and we can add and delete records inline. Then we have various list options. I'll click into that and show and hide whatever information is relevant. So maybe all of these fields that are editable, such as company name, contact name, the billing address, billing email, contact email, phone number, we would want displayed there. And then if we have additional customers that we're going to be submitting and sending purchases to, we can add the customer using that there. I won't get into that part too much as it is pretty simple and straightforward. I do want to go ahead and test the whole workflow now. I'll select the orders. I'm going to turn on the preview mode and we're going to give this a test. So I will go in, create a new purchase order, which label it test so we can easily identify which one we're working on. I'll make the order date today. Again, I'll select the same customer that already exists there and we will create the purchase order. Once we've created it, we have the flexibility to make edits if needed. And then we can go down here and select add item. I'm just going to make this something random for the time being. And I'm going to add two different items so you can see how it works with multiple line item purchase orders. Well, that's good enough for now. I'm going to go in here and complete all of those. And I'll complete eight of the 10 here. So those are ready to be shipped. I'll click create packing slip. And you can see down here that it says started and automation is occurring and you'll see momentarily that those numbers should disappear. Our packing slip has now been created. So this is the one that I just generated and you can see the quantity to ship for the item name is right here. 
And however you deliver these products or send or ship these products in slips to the customer, again, depending on your workflow, it might vary a little bit, but let's say the receiver comes to your site. They can just click here. We'll open the form, show the packing slip ID or any additional information that you need to display, select the date that it shipped, the person's name, and they can add their signature. Again, that part can be done all from a tablet if you wanted or a touchscreen computer. It doesn't really matter. So I'll click submit. We'll go back to our interface and you can see now that the receiver name has been entered. The signature has been added here and the shipping date has been added. If you wanted to take this entire process a step further, you can add in automations and integrations, like I mentioned previously with QuickBooks to move this information through to the QuickBooks or some other accounting software, you can create different documents. So let's say you needed to provide the customer with the packing slip after it's been signed, you can create an integration that way that develops a PDF, automatically emails it to the customer, and you really have a wide range of flexibility if you want to tie in other software or even automations directly integrated with Airtable. That is it for the series. That's part one, two, and three. If you have any questions, please make a comment or send me an email. I would be happy to clarify some things. Again, this isn't going to be exactly specific to your company or your use case. Everyone works a little bit differently, but this should give you a really good start on how to create some sort of custom application for your company. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.